Hello everyone, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist based in Vienna, Austria. In this video, I do a comprehensive set of tests on the Mi SmartBand 5. First, I'll test the quality of the sleep tracking against the scientific EEG monitor. Second, I will test the heart rate measurements. And finally, I will evaluate the accuracy of the step counter. As always, I do not want to waste your time, so timestamps are in the description below and also on the timeline. The Mi SmartBand 5 is one of the cheaper fitness trackers you can buy, coming in at about $40 or even less. I see it as a cheaper competitor to, for instance, the Fitbit fitness watches. It has many features, but today I will focus on three of its main features. First of all, the sleep tracking, second, the heart rate monitor, and finally, the step counter. Now, let's start with the sleep tracking. Sleep tracking has been updated compared to the previous models and the Mi Band 5 can now track REM sleep in addition to deep sleep and light sleep. And it can also track your naps during the day. The question is how accurate are these sleep stage predictions? For the sleep comparison, I wore the Mi Band 5 to bed for two nights. At the same time, I also wore this portable scientific EEG device and I recorded myself using an infrared camera. The EEG device measures brain waves and muscle movements. It's called the Hypnodyne ZMAX and is used by several of my colleagues in scientific studies. If you're interested in this device, I will link it below. I manually went through the recording of the EEG and scored each part of the night for the different sleep stages. I also manually went through the Mi Band 5 sleep stages in the app and noted those down in a table so I could analyze them. With the infrared recording, I can actually check what my movements were like and see if the Mi Band correctly predicts those moments that I'm awake. Let's have a look at the results. Here you can see the first night I recorded. On top, you see the sleep stages as they were recorded using the EEG device. On the horizontal axis, we have the time of night. And as you can see, I went to bed quite late, a little bit after one. On the vertical axis, we have the different sleep stages, deep sleep, light sleep, REM sleep, and awake. The sleep stages are plotted in the order that they're usually also displayed in research. On the bottom here, we have a similar plot, but these are the sleep stages as they were recorded by the Mi Band 5. If we first look at deep sleep according to the EEG, which I marked here in purple, we do see that for this night, these parts were indeed also marked as deep sleep by the Mi Band. And I'm pretty impressed by this. A lot of sleep trackers get deep sleep very wrong, and at least for this night, it looks pretty good for the Mi Band 5. Next, if we look at REM sleep, which I marked here in red, we see that this does not match perfectly between the EEG and the Mi Band. There is some overlap, but it's hard to say if this was by chance or not. When it comes to detecting awake moments, the Mi Band appears to do pretty okay. It detected the main awake moment, but not the short moment of awakening. When looking at the second night I recorded, which I will show you in a moment, it will become much clearer how well the Mi Band can actually detect these moments that I'm awake. To see the sleep cycles, I added non-REM sleep in blue and again marked REM sleep in red. Each sleep cycle starts with a combination of deep and light sleep together called non-REM and always ends in REM. So in total here, we have one, two, three, four, five complete sleep cycles. However, if we're just looking at the sleep stages as they were predicted by the Mi Band, I would say it's not easy to actually see these sleep cycles in the data. Now let's see if we see similar patterns for the second night. And this one I've plotted here. Now again, starting with deep sleep, we see that the Mi Band actually detected almost no deep sleep this night. It detected a tiny bit of deep sleep here, but overall that's not very much. If we look at REM sleep on the other hand, we see that this is detected a bit better this night than the first night. There is some clear overlap between the EEG on top and the Mi Band on the bottom. The only part of the night that is not that great is this part of the night where I was awake a lot in between my REM stages. However, this is also quite a difficult part of the night to score for a wearable, so it's not surprising that the Mi Band got this wrong. Looking at the part of the nights I was awake, marked here in green, we see that the Mi Band did detect those parts of the night quite well. Finally, for this night, I would say that we can indeed see some of the sleep cycles based just on the Mi Band data. 
This is quite interesting since this is arguably one of the most important characteristics of the night to detect. Now to continue, let's look at the overall statistics for the agreement between the EEG device and the Mi Band. First, let's look at the total percentage of each sleep stage the EEG and the Mi Band predicted. So the EEG device is here on the left and the Mi Band here on the right. As we saw before, the Mi Band did not predict enough deep sleep and also not enough REM sleep. On the other hand, it predicts too much light sleep and too much time awake. We can actually check which of the sleep stages are mostly confused by the Mi Band. And that's what I've displayed here. On top, we have the sleep stages according to the EEG device. And on the left, we have the sleep stages according to the Mi Band. Now each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the actual sleep stages was recorded as each sleep stage by the Mi Band. First of all, we can see that about 45% of what was actually deep sleep was also predicted as deep sleep by the Mi Band. Most of the rest of this was actually predicted as light sleep. Interestingly though, almost everything that the Mi Band marked as deep sleep was indeed also deep sleep. For light sleep, we see that it for large parts agrees. However, a large percentage is still confused with REM sleep. Now, if we move on to REM sleep, of what was actually REM sleep, only 17% was correctly identified as REM sleep. In fact, REM sleep was most often detected as light sleep. Finally, awake was detected quite well with more than 90% correct. So these results definitely look promising and I will do a more thorough test in the future with many more nights of sleep data in a dedicated video. Now, in addition to the sleep staging, the Mi Band also provides a sleep score each night. Once I collect more data, it will be interesting to see if this score is predictive of how I feel in the morning. To test the heart rate accuracy of the Mi Band 5, I will compare it to the Polar H10 chest strap, which is generally considered to be one of the most accurate consumer devices available for heart rate measurements. I wore both the Mi Band 5 and the Polar H10 chest strap for 14 spinning sessions and 8 weightlifting sessions. That way I can check my heart rate at different heart rate ranges. Let's have a look at those results. Here I display an overview of the heart rate accuracy. Each dot here is a single heart rate measurement with on the horizontal axis the value according to the Polar H10 chest strap and on the vertical axis the value according to the Mi Band 5. The blue line here indicates perfect agreement. So any measurement along this line had roughly the same value for the Polar H10 and the Mi Band. The red line indicates those measurements where the value according to the Mi Band is about half that of the actual value according to the Polar H10. The reason I added this line is because in the past I've seen that many devices measure half the actual heart rate when they make a mistake. This has to do with the fact that your heart rate is a frequency that the device has to detect. If we look at all this data, we can see that quite often the Mi Band detects the correct heart rate. But there are definitely some moments, especially when I have a higher heart rate, where the Mi Band gets it wrong. So let's see why that is by looking at the individual training sessions. Here you see the first training session. Along the horizontal axis we have the time, and my heart rate is along the vertical axis. In blue I plotted my heart rate according to the Polar H10 chest strap, and in red is my heart rate according to the Mi Band 5. One thing you will notice is that there's a maximum of one heart rate measurement per minute. This is because this is the most detailed data export that Xiaomi provides at the moment. I will try to get more detailed data exports for future videos. Overall though, we can see that for this training session, the agreement is quite good between the Polar H10 and the Mi Band 5. Now this is my next spinning session and we see similar patterns. Overall, the agreement is quite good. Maybe the heart rate is a little bit lower than it's supposed to be, but overall it's doing okay. If we go to the next training session, we see similar patterns. However, for this training session here, we see some problems. For the first two parts of my training, the heart rate was tracked pretty accurately, but for the last half of my training, it was not tracked that accurately. Here we can see that the heart rate drops where it's supposed to rise, and here it doesn't rise as quickly as it's supposed to. Now, if we go to the next training session, it agrees quite well again for this training session as well, and this training session as well. However, here we have another training session where it had problems tracking my heart rate. Only for one part of my training does the heart rate agree pretty well. For the other parts of the training, it fails to find these increases in heart rate. Now for this training session, it did all right again. 
For this training session, it again missed one part of the training, where for this small part, it did not track this increase in heart rate. And the next spinning session was pretty bad again. It only captured the increase in heart rate for this first part of the training, but for the last three quarters of the training, it did not match the heart rate of the Polar H10. Here we have again one good training session where it does match my heart rate, but for the last two spinning sessions, there's again a problem. Here we see that for this part of the training, it fails to increase the heart rate. And for the last training session, we see something similar. For one part of the training, it fails to match this increase in heart rate. To close it off, let's have a look at weightlifting. Now, a lot of these optical heart rate sensors have a problem with weightlifting because they come with sudden increases in heart rate and that's difficult to keep up with. Let's have a look how it looks for the Mi Band. That's what we see here. Now this minute resolution data is not that great to see this, but if we look at the Polar H10, we see these sudden increases in heart rate and the Mi Band just doesn't match that. And we see that basically for all weightlifting sessions where for each set that I did, there's a sudden increase in heart rate that is not matched by the Mi Band, but the overall pattern is followed by the Mi Band. I was hoping to get more detailed heart rate data from the Mi Band data export instead of just the per minute data that I have now. Now I'm trying to figure out ways of getting the data in a higher resolution. Once I've figured out a way to do that, I will create a new video showing you the final results. The Mi Band 5 also features a step counter. Now to see if this counts my steps accurately, I went out into the cold and took exactly 4,000 steps in segments of 1,000 steps. To get an accurate reference step count, I manually counted my steps using this tally counter. Let's have a look at the results. As I mentioned, for the step counting test, I went out and I took four times exactly 1000 steps. I wore the Mi Band on my left arm, which is also what it was set to in the settings. I alternated holding the step counter in my left and right hand for each set of the 1000 steps, which is what the right and left labels here refer to. Now these are the actual steps counted by the Mi Band, and they're supposed to be 1000 if they're correct, and as you can see, it's always very close to the actual 1000 steps I took. So we can say that at least for walking normally with the Mi Band, it counts roughly the correct number of steps. In a future video, I will do an even more detailed step counting test. In that video, I also want to test if the Mi Band gives any steps when it's not supposed to count steps or false positive steps. For instance, when I'm typing or cycling outside, and I also want to see how it performs on other people, not just on me. When it comes to sleep tracking, the first results of the Mi Band 5 are quite promising. What it detected as deep sleep was also mostly deep sleep, though it did predict too little deep sleep. And it was able to detect those moments that I was awake quite well. However, light sleep and REM sleep were quite often confused. Now, I think one important part of sleep tracking is to be able to see your sleep cycles. And I'm not sure yet if the Mi Band 5 can detect these. For one of the two nights, it seemed to be quite good, but for the other, less so. Now, with my future tests, I can hopefully definitively say if it can detect your sleep cycles or not. The heart rate tracking during activities seemed to be a bit hit and miss for me. Generally, when the Mi Band detected an increase in heart rate, it seemed to be quite accurate. However, quite often it missed my increases in heart rate. For 6 out of 14 spinning sessions, it missed a higher heart rate for at least one section of my training. I think it is important for me to also test this on some other people to see if I find the same issues. Now the step counting appears to be pretty spot on while walking normally. It will be interesting to see how it performs when also testing for false positive steps. Or in other words, does it count steps when it's not supposed to count steps? Also, in the past I found that the position of my arm can make a big difference for step counting. So I'll be testing that too. Stay tuned for that video. Overall, my first impression is that for the price, the Mi Band 5 performs quite well. What worries me most is the problems I observed with the heart rate monitoring. But my future test will show if this is a persistent problem that also occurs in other people. I should mention some of the limitations of the data and the analysis that I showed here. First of all, I just tested the Mi Band 5 on me, and it will be interesting to see how it performs on others. Second, the data export I can get is still rather limited, and I hope that exporting my data in higher detail will provide extra insights. 
Finally, to do a full sleep comparison, it would be good to also test the Mi Band 5 against a full scientific polysomnography setup. I actually plan to build my own polysomnography device with open BCI components in the first half of next year. That way I will not have to rely on sleep labs for my testing, which is especially difficult in these times of Corona. In my videos, I do scientific tests on different devices like the Aura Ring, the Fitbit and the ScanWatch. And in the end, I hope to use tracking to improve my life. So if you like that subject and like this video, consider subscribing to my channel and also consider giving it a thumbs up because it makes it easier for other people to find my videos. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.